Welcome to the Palace of Auburn Hills. Tonight, the top seed at Indiana Fever look to stop a three-year playoff losing streak at the hands of the defending champion, Detroit Shock. The WNBA Eastern Conference Finals tip off next. That one possession that you're going to be out there on the court, that possession, you got to give your all to get it. So that means this is a 120-minute series. We got to play 120 minutes hard. Starts tonight with the 40 we're playing. Welcome to the 2009 WNBA playoffs presented by Adidas. We come to you from the home of the defending yeah. champion Detroit Shock. The Indiana Fever sweeping away Washington in their first round series. Detroit doing the same with Atlanta. This is a best of three series. The winner of this series will play the winner of Phoenix and LA. That follows us tonight on ESPN2. The best of five WNBA finals start on Tuesday of next week. And we welcome you inside the Palace of Auburn Hills. Pam Ward along with Hall of Famer Nancy Lieberman. Another one, Rebecca Lobo, will be joining us shortly. So the last three years, Indiana season has been ended in the playoffs by Detroit, which means Tamika Catchings, one of the best players in the world, is still looking for that first inevitable championship ring. When you are creme de la creme, it, which is exactly what Catchings is, she is the best of the best. She knows that to win a championship ring, it must go through the incumbent, and that is Detroit. She is ready for this moment. Now, they did win three or four against Detroit during the regular year. Boy, Detroit, some people had them dead in the water. They were 9-14, and 14, have won 11 of their last 13 games, several of those without Katie Smith, which means Deanna Nolan has had to go from being a really, really good player to an unbelievable player. I really believe that the most important player in this series is Deanna Nolan. Why? Because the fever must stop her. And for Detroit, she has to give that extra level effort that she's done throughout the playoffs. I really believe also that the shot, Pam, have got to cut down on their turnovers to win game one at home. That has been a key in Indiana's win in three of their four games during the regular season. Katie Smith has now missed nine straight games. We don't expect to see her at all in the playoffs. She has three bulging discs in her back. For more on the game, let's go over to the third member of our team, Rebecca Lobo. Well, Pam, these teams are very familiar with one another. As you mentioned, Detroit has crushed Indiana's championship hopes the past three seasons, and both teams are very aware of that. Cheryl Ford said both teams are very physical and competitive. We've knocked them out, and they are hungry. They know they have to get through us. The Fever players are embracing this challenge and wouldn't want it any other way. Tamika Catching said this could finally be the year. Well, guys, it all starts tonight. Catching said this is the best her Fever team has ever played this late in the season. She is joined in the starting lineup by Katie Douglas, who had an MVP-type season. Kelly Bevilacqua was terrific in the overtime win against Washington that eliminated them in Game 3. Tweedy Nolan, we already talked about her. Alexis Hornbuckle really has elevated her game. Nikki Teasley in the starting lineup with Katie Smith out, and she is a sick puppy tonight. She's a sick puppy, but she's going to be out here giving the best that she can to her team. But this is going to be physical basketball, as Rebecca mentioned. It's mano a mano, man to man defense, and about execution. Teasley suffering from the flu, as is Indiana head coach Lynn Dunn, who did not make shoot around today because of the illness. Tweedy Nolan right off the bat. And the rebound for Catchings, leading the WNBA playoffs in both rebounding and scoring. Tammy Sutton Brown can hit from there. If Indiana is getting some production out of Sutton Brown and Ebony Hoffman, it is bonus time for them. They have struggled. Catchings forcing another steal. Her first of tonight. 
Douglas from three. She was horrible from the outside, shooting against Washington, and misses her first shot tonight. I really think that's an aberration because nobody played better coming out of the All-Star game than Katie Douglas. She scored over 20 points a game, more than Tarasi Ham and anybody in that stretch. Catching, still red hot. Her three goes down. Douglas was three for 15 from the floor in game two against Washington, 0 for five from three, and they still won. You're going to see a lot of different defenders on Deanna Nolan. Ketz is going to start, but you can see they're switching on the perimeter with Bevilacqua. Shot clock at six. Nolan takes it right down the teeth of the defense and scores. Her game is absolutely a ticket seller. She can use the right hand, the left hand. She can split defenses. She's got the three-point shot. She is the full package, Deanna Nolan. Douglas again fires away, and this time it falls. A good sign for Indiana Fever fans that she hit a shot. The difference for the shot during the stretch where they just were hotter than any other team to the finish line, I believe the acquisition of Mickey Teasley, great passer, good floor leader, understands how to win. They ticked her up because they wanted another outside threat. Cheryl Ford bounces one off the glass. Here comes Indiana. Ebony Hoffman can't handle the pass. And Alexis Hornbuckle, who's a very good defender, gets it. A year ago, she led the league as a rookie in steals, active hands, and swarms the ball. Nolan again, left open, catchings, battling for it. And I think they're going to get catchings for the foul. And she went out after it. Hey, guys, harder, tighter eyes. Lynn Dunn, you hear she is wired yes, for sound. Eyes harder. Missed Trap only her, eyes harder. her second shoot around in 39 years of coaching. The other time was when she was on a recruiting trip at Purdue. Uh, she is one of the best coaches in this league, and she's really up for coach of the year as Hornbuckle steps in and makes her presence felt immediately. Deanna Nolan really giving a lot of credit to Hornbuckle. Oh, nice pass. And a three-point play opportunity. Sweet pass from Douglas. And a nice cut to the hole by Sutton Brown. Tim, Indiana is best when they're in transition. They're getting their points in the flow against your defense. And Sutton Brown, she just has to be solid and make the easy buckets as she just did. Foul on Taj McWilliams, who will turn 39 next month. Indiana, the worst field goal shooting team in the league, which is remarkable. And here they are playing in a conference final. Catching forces a, another play. And we'll she be able to at one speed, right? Yeah, it's uh, ultra fast and uh, faster than you. Faster than anybody. And I didn't mean you. No, I mean, <laughs> anybody, anybody in the anybody. universe. I mean, not fast, fast like Nolan, but she gets to the balls. Teasley from the outside buries it for three. Nikki Teasley is not a jump shooter. She's a set shooter, and if she gets 10 toes to the basket and you let her look at the rim that long, she's going to knock those down. Sutton Brown got free and missed an easy one underneath. But she is, will do from time to time. Indiana with a three-point lead. Teasley left alone to shoot another one. That one won't go. Catching skied in to get a rebound and a foul against Detroit. Mike Price, Sue Block, Kirk Clark Stevens, our officials. Cheryl Ford whistled for her first. Rick Mahorn took Yo, over two three down. games in when yeah, yeah. Bill down. Lambeer resigned. Two down. See, this is good. You have your coaches. These are so such well-scouted teams. They know that two down is a play to get Katie Douglas a shot. Oh, Tully Bevilacqua misses the layup. She was so wide open, and you must use the backboard on that shot. With the first five points in overtime in game two, in a game in which they came from behind to eliminate Washington. Shot clock inside of 10. Teasley working on catchings, leaves it short. Ford can't get it to go. Here they come in transition. It's exactly what makes Indiana special, but great defense following, hawking the ball from behind. One buckle goes up against Sutton Brown. Can't get the rebound. One buckle battles for it. They get a fresh 24. 
The game starting out just as we expected. Very tenacious play. Well, very tenacious, but Detroit runs their offense through Taj McWilliams on the high post. They were looking for Tweedy Nolan coming off of staggers and curls. Nolan with two points so far. Look at catches. It's like there's four of them out there. There are four <laughs> players on Indiana this year that had over 50 steals. Right. Unheard of. Douglas leaves it short. Rebound Hornbuckle. Don't always watch the ball. Try and watch, if you can, where Tweedy Nolan is. That's where the ball ends up. She gives it up to Hornbuckle. Both teams have missed their last four shots. And Tweedy makes it five for Detroit. Rebound off of Katie Douglas. And they're going to talk about it. As, uh, the officials originally said it was Indiana ball, and that's a great job by the officials to get together and get it right. You are seeing the great effort and the great hustle by two teams. Tamika Catching showing you what the next level is as she comes in. Does a great job of pulling up right now. Catch for the jump shot. This is championship basketball at the Palace. ESPN's presentation of the WNBA playoffs is presented by Adidas. Impossible is nothing. And in part by IHOP. IHOP's gone NFL. Try the all-pro lineup only at IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. Indiana with a three-point lead over Detroit. Indiana with the best record in the East this year, even though they struggled mightily in the half-court offense, Nancy. Well, they were last in the league most of the season, shooting about 40%, but this is how you overcome 40%. You hit a few threes right here. You get a lot of points off of turnovers. You get to the foul line, offensive rebounds, and really, it is their defense. I look at these areas right here. I call them profit centers because that's where you can make up for the lack of hitting shots within your half-court offense and uh, they have done it they were number one in the league 11 steals a game and if you steal the ball in the half court it's a steal and a score so you're getting points and you shoot higher percentage off your second shot so they make things happen Javante Zellas the terrific rookie from Pittsburgh checks in and is fouled Indiana also forcing 19 turnovers a game that was also first in the WNBA let's go over to Rebecca Lobo well guys because Indiana wins games because of their defense no surprise that Lynn Dunn was talking all defense in that last huddle she was telling her team we don't have enough pressure on the ball we don't have enough ball revert pressure on ball reversal pick up sooner keep them on one side of the floor and make sure you close out Lynn Dunn very aware that her team needs steals needs points in transition in order to beat Detroit and Rebecca you're absolutely correct because Detroit likes to reverse the ball through their high post which is their four if Indiana can keep the ball on one side of the floor it takes the ball away from Tweedy Nolan getting it on the weak side off of those staggers that we talked about earlier and it really limits their offense Nolan two points on one for four shooting so far Breon January number 20 in blue right there with the ball checking in for the first time has done a terrific job backing up Tully Bevilacqua at the point terrific young rookies guarding each other right now in zealous and January what a job they've done this year catchings recognizing that the shot clock is expiring step back hit it when I talked to her the other day Pam she said okay my mindset I'm playing 41 minute games Okay, some people play in five-minute blocks or four-minute blocks. She's taking it to a finite number. What do I do in one minute? What do I do in the second minute? Breon January with a nice hustle play to come up with it. The rookie out of Arizona State was key in game one of their series against Washington. 16 points off the bench all in the second half. Catching so good at leading her team. Worked so hard during the year to work on her outside shooting. The step back, that's one of her best moves where she steps, creates the contact, separation. She's getting more arc on her shot. She worked with the shot doctor throughout the course of the season, and that was Harvey, uh, Marvin Harvey. They were in the gym at the All-Star game a couple years ago, 7 a.m. in the morning, just working on arc on her shot. Braxton. Almost forced to turn over, got a jump ball out of it. 
Cats keep shooting like this, Marvin Harvey's going to make a lot of dough <laughs> being, a sh being the shot doctor. Yeah. He'll be better than okay. the flu shot. Yes. So we're at five on the shot clock. Okay. Two, hey, hold on a second. Hold on a second. We didn't have a change of position. Falls right here. You want to go there or you want to go midcourt? Uh, five, five seconds. Five seconds. Let's go right? here. Yeah. Let's go here. Okay. Five seconds. Yeah. Hey, jump yeah. balls right here. Uh, Tamika Ketchings during the regular season shot only 39% from the floor in the playoffs, elevating that to 58%. She was spectacular, had one of the best stretches you'd ever want to see in that second half against Washington in the clinching game. Oh, it was unbelievable. Her team was not supposed to win. Coming from behind in both victories against the Mystics, Detroit's missed its last Six shots from the floor, and an offensive foul has been called. They got Hornbuckle for the moving screen. Right here, trying to figure out what they're going to do. They know a, a screen is coming, but that is really a, a late screen and a good call by the officials. Detroit and the Fever on the perimeter, they can switch little to little, especially with all this offense. Warren Buckle has the assignment on Ketchings, who knew that miss, so she went and got a rebound. Jessica Moore, number 31 in blue, checking in. And now a foul. 14. On Nolan, Crap. who was bodying up with Moore. The first hey, on Tweedy. Can you watch that Mike Blue Snipes? Tweedy Nolan's going to have to realize she's going to get bumped by a lot of players today. You must jump into the numbers of the player you're guarding so you don't run the screener over. And it's a race to the top foot. If you get your foot over the screener's foot, you're going to be clean. And now a moving screen on Jessica Moore. Now on the fifth-year player out of Connecticut, who was signed in June. Huh? He should have just ripped and gone baseline, didn't you think? Jess Moore was vital to this team when Tammy Sutton Brown missed a couple games with a toe injury, and Jess Moore averages nine points and four rebounds in that stretch. Never known for her offensive prowess, but as Nancy mentioned, really came in and helped. Oh, McWilliams going up. Nice hustle to keep the ball alive. They need a shot, and they don't get it off. Fourth turnover for Rick Mahorn's club. Hey, hey, P. Tweet. Next time she's had a pick hitter, and no. Rick Mahorn, one of the bad boys, along with Bill Lambeer. Yeah, he's a bad boy, but he's a really good coach. Yep. The tandem of him and Cheryl Reed. Cheryl Reed is going to be a brilliant head coach in this league one day. He is now the general manager since Bill Lambeer left. Jess Moore fouled underneath. I think they got Braxton for it. Lambeer, an assistant coach for the Minnesota Timberwolves. More WNBA action coming your way. Game two of these two series, Detroit at Indiana, followed by LA at Phoenix, starting at 7 Eastern time on Saturday. And then the WNBA Finals begin on ESPN2 on Tuesday. Terry Gannon and Carolyn Peck, along with Rebecca Lobo and Heather Cox, will be calling the games. You and I will be back in Bristol. In Bristol, where it all happens. The, the heartbeat of the sports. worldwide leader. Yes, so we look forward to that. And a terrific... Boy, both of these series are going to be terrific. L.A. and Phoenix following us tonight on ESPN2. Detroit has gone without a field goal for the last five minutes, and still they're only down four. Tweedy misses again, rebound to Ketchings. Gets it up to January, who's really quick, and they have missed three layups now in this quarter. And that's a problem because that is when they're at their best, the Fever, in transition. Transition the other way. That breaks an 0 for 8 field goal performance by Detroit. You must capitalize on the bunnies around the rim because you're going to get beat in transition because you don't have good defensive lanes. Ketchens posting up Nolan. Two of the best in basketball. Douglas with the long three puts it in over Hornbuckle who looks over at her coach and shakes her head she's saying I had her guarded and she yeah. still put it up 
Nixon, you must put a hand up to the shooter. If your hands are down, Katie Douglas is going to expose you on that defensive sequence. Great length at six feet tall for Douglas. Shot clock again inside the 10 second floor. Shavante Zellis has really picked up a lot of the slack with Katie Smith hurt. Put Shavante Zellis in the same mix with Angel McCautry, with Dewana Bonner. Those three have been off the charts as far as rookies this year. Catching's over to January. He takes it right in, and they do score a layup. And add January to the mix. Because she has not played like a rookie. She's played like a seasoned veteran. In the last eight games, averaging 10 and a half points per game. And Kim, she was a two-time Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year. Nobody knew that she had the offensive prowess, especially at the next level. Last second of the quarter, and it was halfway down for Hornbuckle and rimmed out. Indiana trying to get to its first WNBA Finals, leading the entire first quarter, and they take an 18-13 lead into the second. Welcome back to Detroit. I'm joined now by Indiana head coach Lynn Dunn. Coach Deanna Nolan, only two points on one for five shooting. What have you done to limit her offensively? Well, we're switching. We're switching bigs and littles. You know, we're trying to just disrupt her as much as we can. But I still feel like we've had a couple of breakdowns. We've just been fortunate they've missed some shots. Offensively, you've had a well-balanced attack. What's working well for you on that end? Um, we're trying to go inside and outside. But we've, ordered, we've missed a couple of layups, too. I'm disappointed that we haven't finished some of our shots. But we really want to keep attacking in transition and score early. All right, Coach, thank you. Pam? Thank you, Rebecca. In fact, Indiana missed three layups in that first quarter. Deanna Nolan has uh, been facing a lot of defense, and she's only one for five, as Rebecca mentioned. Well, she's playing against someone who's bigger than her, who's pretty much just as athletic as she is, and quick. So this is a situation where they're going to have to find other ways to get her open off the ball. But I really believe, Pam, the absence of Katie Smith, who usually guards Tamika Catchings, is something that we're going to have to find out how Detroit handles that. Sutton Brown inside. Misses, but at least is fouled and heads to the free throw line. Here Braxton has a couple of personals now. If Tammy Sutton Brown could finish some of these plays around the basket, she's big, she's strong, she's smart, but I think she takes her eye off the rim anticipating the foul because she misses so many chippies. 47% from the floor during the regular year should have been higher. And she's missed a couple here tonight that she should hit. Log on to WNBA.com backslash expect great right now. You can create your very own EA video playlist of your top five WNBA players. Choose from an extensive library of highlights, then share your playlist with your friends. Would Katie Douglas crack your top five? How about Deanna Nolan? Log on to WNBA.com right now and expect great. And if Deanna Nolan isn't in your top five, then you need to rethink why you Something's like the game of exactly. basketball. And, and she, let's use it. She made second team all WNBA today to Deanna. Come on. If she's not a first-teamer, I don't know who is. Well, she's a first-teamer. She could be on an Olympic team. She's got the skill set of some of the top five players in the world, and especially when Smith went out. Sutton Brown forcing the turnover. January, this is what she brings you that Tully doesn't. Tully Bevelacqua. First off, that's two layups she's missed, but she at least can push the pace when she's in there at point. Well, she can push the pace, and you got, as you said, the contrast between Tully kind of with that calm personality, and then as she has mentored Brian January, she can use more of her athleticism, and it's been a great, great pickup by Kelly Kroskoff and her fever team. Tully is 37 years old. She will play one more year and said that she wants to tell Indiana before next season what her plans are. So, the tap now. so they can know what, what to do with their point guard situation, but it's in pretty good hands with January. So these are two mistakes right here by Taj McWilliams. She made a poor pass in the, in the post, and now she didn't win the tip against a smaller player. Douglas aggressively to the hole, has it blocked by Hornbuckle, only one second left on the shot clock. You're dealing with a short clock. The pass has to lead to something going to the front of the rim. 
just like that. But Nolan went up and snatched it. And now she lost the ball. One of the fastest players with the ball in her hands. Two on one, Tamika Dixon. Good play by Zealous, and then Ford. She got that block a couple of times. You're seeing great defense. I mean, we know that the Fever are one of the best defensive teams in the league, and Detroit has up the ante on defense as well. Douglas with the missed shot and a three-second violation, I believe, against Sutton Brown. A little frustration. And Katie doesn't throw it to her. You know what I'm saying? Big's got a little. What happens in Indiana's half-court offense, which is not the thing that makes them a championship team, it's a part of the whole equation. When Douglas or Catchings gets the ball, the rest of the team, they stand, they look, they watch, and their offense is stagnant. Catchings, by the way, on the floor, excuse me, on the bench still. 31, out. Jessica Moore's second personal foul. There is Catch getting a much-deserved rest. And Breon January drawing the defensive assignment on Nolan now. We knew that they were going to throw everything in the sink at Deanna Nolan. Big, small, experienced youth. And look at where she elevates. You cannot guard that. Missed the shot to Mika Dixon. The veteran gets it up to Sutton Brown and a foul on McWilliams. Didn't give her enough property to land. But you can see now that Indiana has Detroit on their heels. They're not dribbling the ball up the court. They're passing the ball up in transition. You gotta slow the ball up, even if you and, um... put somebody on the rebounder just to slow them up a tad. Two fouls on Taj. Sutton Brown with another point. Tully Bevilacqua coming in for Katie Douglas. So you have January and Bevilacqua on the floor at the same time. It's a small lineup in the backcourt. But this is a defensive-minded team right now because Dixon can play solid defense. She's one of the originals in this league. There's only four left. And Lisa Leslie will be leaving after... This WNBA season told us that she, no way she's going to, she's coming back. She's done. No reconsideration on a retirement, which is actually refreshing to hear. Well, now you got to see if she's going to get a lot of gifts. She might come back <laughs> for a second tour. Offensive foul on Cheryl Ford. She has a couple. Cheryl has not scored. Cosmic Williams has not scored. So there's a couple of starters who have not gotten on the score sheet for the shock. And they see Katie Smith in the... Oh, so like a magenta top next to Paulette Pearson. She's been out since five minutes into game one. Which makes it even more amazing what Detroit has done this year to have two All-Stars sit the bench and they have a championship mentality still. Moore gets it blocked by Zealous. The shorter rookie gets in there. Five seconds left on the shot clock. So Detroit playing with only nine players as both Smith and Pearson still on the active list and they're, they're not available. And it took... Cheryl Ford pretty much the whole season long to start getting in shape and feel comfortable as January is doing her part. Detroit 0 for 3 from the floor with three turnovers in this quarter. The largest lead for Indiana extends to 11. And they're doing this with catchings on the bench. If you pick up the basketball against the defense of the Fever, you are in a heap of trouble because they swarm you. Oh, Zealous finds the scene. The rookie has six off the bench. Sutton Brown got it. Good job by Zealous. So a good play on one end, follows it up with a nice defensive play to force the travel. It's always about help the helper who helps the helper. This is where Zealous pulls up. That's all athletic ability by her and confidence. And watch the charge. You help, and she is helping the helper who came to trap. That's great defensive rotation. She is six of Detroit's last eight points. Zealous second only to Angel McCarthy when rookie scoring during the regular season. And Moore stuck out a leg and is called for the block. Got three fouls. Here comes Catchings. Dixon goes out. Then there's a couple ways you can beat a double team. You can drag, dribble it back, or you can attack the hip of the big. And I keep saying it's a race to the top foot. If you beat the top foot of the trapper, then you have the advantage going to the rim. 
Nolan got the switch. She's on the not as quick Sutton Brown, and she went right over her. And that's why they went to that switch to get that matchup. And then Sutton Brown beats everybody down the other end, a laps for Detroit. Indiana scored average 77 points this year. It's the most points they've ever scored in their history as a franchise. And, and we keep belaboring the point, they shot 40% from the field. Worst in the WNBA. Ford misses everything. Teasley can't hang on to it. Tammy Sutton Brown into double figures already with 10 points. Lynn Dunn's team is doing a remarkable job of disrupting the shock in the half court. They've the totally, can't guard her. totally huh? taken away the transition and they muck up the half court and disrupt you. Catching gives it out to Bevilacqua, who fires away from three. Catchings gets another rebound and then travels with it. Didn't get her feet set. Mika Catchings and Indiana with the lead over the defending champions. what's happening right now on SportsCenter. I'm Cindy Bronson. For Brave skipper Bobby Cox, it's one more and done. The only manager Atlanta has known for the last 24 seasons and the winningest in Braves history is agreeing to terms on a new deal with the team today. After 2010, Cox will move into a consulting role with the Braves. Cowboys left tackle Flozell Adams has been fined 12500 bucks by the NFL for a pair of kicking incidents and Sunday night's loss to the Giants. SportsCenter, 11 Eastern on ESPN News. Pam, Nancy, back to you. Thank you very much, Cindy. Here we are in game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. Indiana and Tamika Catchings with the lead over Detroit 26-17. Detroit shooting only 33% from the floor. Because Indiana has made them a jump shot shooting team. If the, if the shock would work a little harder in their spacing in the half court, they wouldn't be double teamed as much. They'd get better shot selection, and they're not getting to the foul line. They missed 11 of their last 15 field goals. Zealous misses one. Great hustle by Cheryl Ford to get the follow in. Her first points. Inside, the post players of Detroit must get involved, and that's Taj Braxton and Ford. Now, Ebony Hoffman was not a three-point shooting kid until Lynn Dunn came in and basically gave her the keys to the car and said, go ahead and shoot from out there, and she's good from out there. But let me take that the next step. She took a lot of three-point shots. <laughs> she just didn't take good three-point shots, and that's what Lynn taught her. And that was a long two. There's a nice baseline to her Tweedy, who has six. Catchings guarded by Teasley. Takes it right to her and puts it in. It's an oxymoron. <laughs> the word guarding. Right. Well, and you might have heard before we went to break, uh, Lynn Dunn sent, looking at that matchup, and she said, Teasley's guarding Catchings. You can't do that. Let's think about posting her up. And Catchings took advantage of that defensive matchup. Here's an offensive foul on Nolan, her second. Catching just does so many things so well. She's big, she's strong. This is a matchup you are not going to win because she lowers herself. Look, as she goes to the rim, she gets underneath of Nikki Teasley, so she has the power, the leverage, and the angle to the rim. And especially since Nikki Teasley is far from 100%, she did not practice the last couple of days, no one on the bench, because she's been battling the flu. And they still have her guarding catchings. And it really wouldn't matter if you're in the weightlifting contest on ESPN Classic, you still wouldn't stop her. Got clock at six for Tully Bevilacqua. Well, that's a turnover. Even if Douglas would have fielded it uh, cleanly, there was no time left on the shot clock. Let's head over to Rebecca. Well, Pam, Detroit is a team that thrives on toughness and confidence. In that last huddle, Rick Mahorn telling his players, Indiana's not that good. You play basketball. Attack the basket. Stop playing around. You're making them think they're good. We've got to be the aggressor. We're not playing the way we're supposed to play. They have been attacking the basket a bit more since they came out of that huddle. You can see where the Fever feel comfortable. They're not intimidated as they have been in the past by what the shot do defensively. Interesting, he says they're not that good. This is a team that was 22 and 12, beat them three out of four times during the regular season. But that's what you coaches do over there, right? 
We do a lot of stuff, and it takes <laughs> a lot stuff? of hours. It's a lot easier <laughs> to be a player and put your three hours a, game, uh, a day in. Catchings called for her second foul, since Shavante Zealous to the free throw line. A rookie out of Pittsburgh, who remarkably was only recruited by two Division I schools, Pittsburgh, where she ended up going, and South Florida. And where would she be today if uh, Marinelle Metters, the coach of Atlanta, who lives in Florida, happened to be watching the state tournament on television, and she was an assistant at Pitt to Agnes Bernardo at that time, and she calls her up, she goes, you got to see this kid. <laughs> and they went down, watched her, and uh, the rest is history for the uh, Pitt program. It's amazing how often, and especially I know it happens a lot in football, when you go to look at another kid, and then you find somebody else who turns out to be a gem. Just got to keep your eyes open. You can see all the switching on the perimeter, but you must get back. That's, that's a shot that Sutton Brown has to make. We're going to sound like a broken record. Great play by Beva Lockwood to strip Zealous. But goodness, Douglas has made a couple of great passes to Sutton Brown underneath, and she's missed both of those shots. Detroit only down eight to Indiana. PGA Tour presents the 2009 Barclays. In the first event of the 2009 PGA Tour playoffs for the FedEx Cup, 35-year-old Heath Slocum locked down his third PGA Tour victory at the Barclays, his first win since the 2005 season. Beginning the final round four strokes off the lead, Slocum fired a 67, besting four other players by one stroke, including the number one in the FedEx Cup standings, Tiger Woods, and number two, Steve Stricker. With the win, Slocum rockets up the FedEx Cup standings from 124th to third, guaranteeing him a trip to Atlanta for the Tour Championship presented by Coca-Cola. Congratulations, Heath Slocum. The 2009 Barclays Champion. Left field, shallow, dropping it in there. And the Red Sox win it. Bit of space. Another opening, tucked away beautifully. And there is an ideal example of the difference between the quality of these players, Marquisio. Certainly hasn't had that tonight. That was Sproles in motion. Here's Sproles outside. Oh, and he's decked as the ball goes down, and that's Howard again. In the area. Almost came to one, it's in the back of the net, and there's no offside this time, it's Totti second. The championship runs through the East, runs through the Detroit shop, and so to have this opportunity to play against them, you know, in conference finals, same situation we were in last year, and, uh, you know, I'm ready. When isn't she ready? She's just absolutely amazing, and it, it's what she does, her hustle, her effort. It's one thing to have to deal with her in a championship series like this. She's all over the place. She gets steals. She can pull up. We mentioned with that little short jump shot, she's expanded her game from three. She misses. She tracks down the rebound, and I asked Katie Douglas today at practice. I said, tell me about catching. She said, you know, I had to guard her for most of my career. She said, but it's another thing to have her on your team. You really see the work ethic, the first hand, how she takes care of her body, treatment, how she's the first one in the gym. I mean, when your teammate sings those accolades to you, it means something. And then Katie Douglas makes the, the net sing, knocking down her third three of the game. A blocking foul on this end against Indiana. Let's go over to Rebecca. Guys, just to add a little bit more on Tamika Catching, she's been unstoppable during these playoffs. And I asked her why, and she said it's simply a determination and will to win. She says all year she tries to be consistent and steady, but when the playoffs come, it's time to pick it up another notch. And it's just part of her maturation progress. She said 
the process. She said she's always prided herself on being an unselfish team player and wouldn't like taking 30 shots, but she's come to understand now that it's all about winning and it's all about taking ownership, and that's what she's done for this team. It doesn't get any crystal, any more crystal clearer than that. She understands. Remember when LeBron was hammered by the media and the fans saying that on big shots he passed it up? And everybody said those are the shots that Jordan and Kobe would take. She has to have that same mentality that Cynthia Cooper had, that Lauren Jackson has, and not worry about what people think. She's a remarkable player. She did make the first team all WNBA squad. She has not won an MVP award and probably won't because her shooting percentage isn't high. How about Sutton Brown missing bunnies all night and then she gets that tough one? Well, that was a power move. I say this all the time. You, you, you make layups with your eyes and you stay with your shot. That time she did that. She's got 12 points. The lead is back up to 11. And now it is back down to 9. That largest lead was 11. Zealous, magnificent off the bench. She has 11. She's instant offense. If you remember from the uh, Detroit Piston years of championship, Vinnie Johnson, the microwave. They liken her to the microwave because she gives you that instantaneous offense. That's such a 20th century reference. we got to get a better moniker for her. We'll work on that. Wait, back then they wore short <laughs> shorts, and they had a lot of championships. <laughs> Douglas with the rebound off the Sutton Brown miss. Boy, Ketchings was screaming for the ball. And Ford knocked it out of her hand. 16 seconds left on the shot clock. ESPN's college football primetime continues Thursday night. Number four, Ole Miss takes on South Carolina. College football primetime presented by Applebee's, part of Tailgate Week, presented by Kingsford Charcoal on ESPN Thursday at 7.30 Eastern. We yes. love Tailgate Week because we get food at the truck. <laughs> I'm glad you do, but the old uh, ball coach, Luke Spurrier, knows his stuff. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Indiana to inbound. There's Katie Smith. She's done a terrific job of being a coach on the bench, particularly with Zealous. She'll often uh, just talk to Shavante as soon as she gets off the court. It's about mentorship. When you're a star like Katie Smith is, when you're a great leader and have won at every level, share that. You're commanded to share what you know, and she does that each day with her. Indiana needed to shoot. Nolan blocked. Douglas with the shot clock winding down. Horn Buckle takes it all the way in. What do we got? We got a blocking foul. An undercut by January. We really never had a chance to see everything that Horn Buckle could do at the University of Tennessee. Her game continues to expand in transition. She goes up. It's the right call. That's nice with the finger roll, the attempt. Alexis Horn Buckle. Indy over the limit and fouls. One buckle with the free throw. Shavante Zealous had scored the last five points for Detroit. One of the players that head coach Cheryl Reeves said has really embraced running the team and coming in and taking over at times with Smith on the bench. I think they really all have. Once they realized Katie Smith was not going to be a factor, you get into the mindset, this is who we are, this is what we have, and these are your responsibilities, and they've all accepted it. Hoffman took an unguarded three and missed it. Detroit is not led in this game. Ketchings gets her hands on the ball, stays with Detroit. Coming up on the IHOP Halftime Report, we'll get you back to the studio in Cindy Brunson for a preview of tonight's Western Conference Final. Phoenix and L.A. playing game one. Also more on the All-WNBA team and a pennant race update in Major League Baseball. Cindy standing by to give you all that good stuff coming up. Sam, if I'm running this offense for the shot, why would you go to the side of the floor where catchings is? It's almost like, remember when Deion Sanders used to kind of take away one side of the football field? She's too good and too active. Started away from her. Oh, Hoffman puts it in. Douglas has had three nifty passes. That one was converted for the bucket. You don't have a good offensive set. Leads to transition. You cannot get back. And Fever get an easy basket. Three assists for Katie. 
the Indianapolis native who went home to play after giving Orlando and Connecticut so many great years. Uh, she's meant a lot to both of those franchises. Uh, a class act, knows how to play the game, and has probably exceeded every level that she ever thought she could be at, and she's a champion. Won a championship at Purdue with our own Carolyn Peck, who's going to call the game later on with Terry Gannon. And he could check that. It's two points. January called for a second foul. Zellis heads back to the free throw line. It's not bad for Detroit at this point if they can stop the clock. You get to the foul line, you get a couple points, and now you can get back and set your defense, which has been a problem for Detroit in this half. Sella so 6 of 7 from the free throw line. She has 12 points. Sutton Brown has a dozen to lead Indiana. This is just good stuff. She, at the end of the season, when Tweety Nolan was kind of heating it up, she was her backcourt mate, and she took some of the scoring pressure off of her when she had the 25 points in the playoff game. In the big game, she's elevated her game because she has the confidence of her teammates. January, the rookie, running the point in the final minute of the half. Cross court, very dangerous, especially when Tweety Nolan's over there. Hey! Nolan puts it in. She's got eight, a nice run by Detroit, which trailed by as many as 11 in this game. Remember, they were down 18 to Atlanta in game one of that series and ended up sweeping. This will be a big possession for them with their confidence coming out of the locker room in the third quarter. They do not have catchings on the floor. That's a low percentage shot for Hoffman. Horn buckle. Gazella, she was red hot in the first half and continued it. Javante Zellis with 16 points in the first half. Detroit ends it on an 11-2 run. That's the way the defending championship team plays to get back into things. Well, the shot finally got a little bit up tempo. Zellis ready on the catch. Hornbuckle knowing to go to the hot player. Defense leads to good things for the shock and on their 11-2 run. They rebounded, they ran, and those are high-priced cheerleaders. Let's go over to Rebecca Lobo, who has Tamika catching. Thanks, Pam. Tamika, Detroit averages 94 points a game in these playoffs. What have you done to keep them to 35 in this first half? I think our defense, our defense intensity, uh, we came out, we were ready, we jumped on them. But, um, you know, we got to pick it up on Zellis. Uh, no one's not really hurting us right now, but Zellis is. So we're going to have to kind of alter our defense strategy, use the same defense that we're using on Nolan on Zellis as well. All right, guys, thank you. Pam? Yeah, Rebecca, Tweedy only has eight, but the terrific... Rookie out of Pittsburgh, Shavante Zellis has 16, including a three-pointer with time winding down in the first half. At the break, Detroit once down 11, now only down two. We'll be back after these messages with the IHOP Halftime Report. Game one of the best of three Eastern Conference Finals at the half, Indiana with a 37-35 lead over Detroit. The shot perhaps not led in this game, but the defending champions closing on an 11-2 run to get close. Pam Ward along with Hall of Famer Nancy Lieberman. Now, boy, right out of the blocks, Indiana looked great because they were playing Indiana-style basketball. They were rebounding. They were pushing the ball up the floor. They kept Detroit on their heels. And really, kudos to the post, Sutton Brown, and to Hoffman. You get the ball the net. Look at this. Tully throwing the ball all the way down. Those posts are sprinting. They're not jogging. And they're getting rewarded for their hard work. This time, it's Douglas who sees her post gives the ball up early, and that was very important, I thought, because you got to reward the bigs for running. So a pair of 11-point leads evaporated in large part because the rookie, Javante Zellis, came in off the bench and was pouring them in. If you're going to come off the bench, you better have high energy and high results, and she had both. She had 16 points, but it was her that helped Detroit get on the 11-2 run. They hit seven of their last eight shots going into the locker room. She did it on defense. 
she did it with the three. That's the one that maybe will be the rallying cry for the shock as they come back to the second half. She hit that three right before the buzzer that ended the first half. There are your statistics. Indiana shooting for them a very good 44%, but Detroit really coming on, and their defense in the last two minutes, excuse me, the last three minutes, Indiana only scored two points. They only scored two points, but Indiana did a wonderful job in the first half. Seven offensive rebounds. They got five easy points off of those. There is the rookie, Shavante Zellis, played her college ball for Agnes Baronado at Pittsburgh. And again, no Katie Smith. She's got the hurt back, and uh, Zellis has come in and almost scored as much as the rest of her team, certainly shooting better from the floor. She's also hit all but one of her free throws. Tamika Catchings. Seven points, six rebounds, and two steals. And this format, Indiana with the better record has to start on the road. And obviously huge to win game one because then you're uh, you're gonna go to Indiana if you're Detroit and you don't want to be in that position to have to win two there. That just puts so much pressure on the higher seed if you don't take care of business. You, you don't have a chance in this format to make a mistake. Mistakes. Both teams starting the second half with turnovers. She ran into her own teammate, Hoffman, and a gimme turnover for Hornbuckle. You got two teams here that are very long, very lengthy. As you see with Sutton Brown blocking that shot, you must have better spacing to take away anybody trying to swarm you or double team you. Sutton Brown with, at 6 4 with the block. Nolan called for fouling catchings. Let's head over to Rebecca Lobo. Well, guys, Shavante Zellis not in the game right now, but she will be a focus of Indiana's defense, according to Lynn Dunn. She said she was happy. They did a great job holding Deanna Nolan to only eight points, but they're going to be putting a different person on Zellis when she comes in the game. Coach Dunn wouldn't tell me who. She said she was happy that they attacked inside and got all of Detroit's bigs into foul trouble. She said our team basically has to not panic. We're going to make our layups, and we're going to hit our jump shots like you saw the one Tully just take. Tully has not hit a shot today. She is 0 for 4 from the floor. We're going to figure out who's guarding Zealous when she comes in. There's going to be a lot of people <laughs> guarding Zealous, and then we'll get back to Rebecca on that. Yeah. But that's what Catchings told Rebecca heading into the locker room. That they did a good job on Tweedy, who knocks down the shot. She's got 10, but it was Zealous who really punished them off the bench. This is the first tie of the game. The first tie since nothing, nothing. Douglas anticipating more contact perhaps than she got and missed that shot. If Cheryl Ford can clean up the defensive boards and not allow the fever, those easy putbacks, those seven offensive rebounds, Detroit's going to play a lot better this half. Oh, boy, Catching's got it. Teasley tried to take it away from her, and instead, Nikki was called for her first personal foul. Seventh rebound of the night for Catching's, who came into this game leading everybody in the playoffs by averaging 25 points per game and 14 rebounds per game. Yeah, and that's up from the 15-1 that she averaged. She was second on the team this year to, to Katie Douglas, but you said it, she has lifted her game. Two and a half steals, two and a half blocks. That's second best in the playoffs so far. From the outside, force that one. Rebound battle for Hoffman, couldn't get it. It's Detroit basketball. Benchings also shooting coming into this game 58% from the floor, well up from her 39% during the regular season. When we saw her at the All-Star game, I mean, she couldn't stop talking about how poorly she was shooting, which really was a surprise to me because she does so many things well. Detroit leads for the first time tonight. Nolan with four quick ones to start the second half. It is a 15 to two Detroit run. Oh, Douglas, that's a floater that had no chance. Ford gets the rebound and somehow gets out of the double team. Nolan leaves the three short. Teasley able to, excuse me, Ford able to get the rebound. Motion, 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 let's go. Get her, get her. Rick Mahorn wired for sound. Nolan with the miss and a foul on Detroit. They get Cheryl Ford for her third. And here comes Shavante Zellis, instant offense in the person of number one in white. 
Really a, a really good substitution here. Nikki Teasley gets you into your sets early. The pace is up and down. Then you bring Zealous into the game. She gives you that instant offense. But the story of the second half right now is Cheryl Ford's rebounding and hustle and the shots by Tweedy Nolan from the corner. Indiana scored on only two points in over six minutes. Bridging these two quarters, the second and the third, Hoffman had no opportunity on that one. Good hustle by Catchings to get the rebound. Turnaround shot as the shot clock was expiring. And Indiana is really struggling offensively. Now, this is their Achilles heel. This is a team that was last in the league in field goal percentage. And they'll go on these droughts. They'll go on these droughts, Pam, because they're not getting easy points in transition. And Lynn Dunn is echoing that to her team right now. They're 0 for 6 this quarter in the half court. That is not their personality to rely on that. Oh, boy. And you see? No one's hurt. Detroit. It's a 20 Ben's over. This is a kid who has battled all sorts of injuries, had foot injuries coming into the season, had a concussion against Atlanta in the last round. Yeah, she's just all over the place. And this is, she gets down low, she gets poked right here. But she's tough and she's got one of the best trainers in the WNBA right there. She uh, she has the contact. The poke right there. The, 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 the hit on the head. It doesn't matter. She'll, she'll come back and play. There's Laura Ramos, the very talented and very busy trainer. Boy, the injury she's had to deal with over the last couple of years. And this is a team that won the WNBA championship last year without Cheryl Ford, who remember tore her ACL against LA during the regular season. And they're making this run without Clinette Pearson and without Katie Smith. It really, the resiliency of this team, I don't think you can put it into words. Well, I have one word, they're champions. And they're a lot better than we think they are and deeper than we think they are. 15 to 2 run, catching's almost forced to turn over. Taj McWilliams, first shot of the night, goes in. Taj McWilliams will never, ever hurt you. She will always be a factor on the team she plays for. She'll hurt the other team. Absolutely <laughs> not. You're the team. Hoffman hits a three, excuse me, a long two. That's a much needed shot for Indiana. Douglas got her long arm in on that one. 18 seconds left to go on the shot clock. Cheryl Reeve, the assistant as Kara Braxton comes in, told me at shoot around this morning that, that this is just the kind of team that plays better when their backs are against the wall. There's Cheryl, you talk about a, now that's a, a really, really good coach. Well, she's a great X's and O's coach. She knows this league intimately as a GM. You know, she, she's been in this league, it seems like, Forever, but I believe it's her ninth year. Oh, uh, Braxton missed a, a gimme follow. Here's Bevel Aqua with the basketball. Tully has not scored in this game. The starting point guard. But really, Detroit, one of these teams that they will take any doubt and use it to their advantage, even if the doubt sometimes is manufactured. You know, they think people are against them. They're going to use that as fuel to come out and win basketball games. They have a championship mindset, but look what happens in transition. Look at this little freeze. When you get by Tamika Catchings, you your grease lightning. Often called for the foul. You might have seen on the replay that Tweedy lost control of the basketball going up, so that's a fortunate foul for Detroit. More WNBA action coming away on Friday. Games two of the conference finals. Detroit at Indiana at 7 Eastern, followed directly by L.A. at Phoenix. ESPN2 on Tuesday is your home for the WNBA finals. That becomes a much more fair best of five, the 2-2-1 two, two, format. Well, I think Detroit knows a little bit about being in the finals. Uh, what they've done, they've won three of the last six titles. And but when I look at Tweedy Nolan, this is a player who's fifth has the fifth highest scoring average in the history of the WNBA in the playoffs. And we're talking about people like Cooper, Cynthia Cooper, I might add, one of the greatest players this league has ever seen. Another turnover for Indiana. They have four. Oh. They had three turnovers in the third quarter on one of a shooting before this sequence. 
Look at this play by Hornbuckle. This is against catching. She's beat. That is a volleyball beatdown. That's a spike right there. That's unreal. And keeps it in play. Great play by Hornbuckle, a terrific defender. Her second block of the night. Not a turnover because the ball stays with Indiana. They get a fresh 24. You see Catchings has not scored in this second half. Not many people have for Indiana. Oh, Catchings flies in from nowhere, puts up a three. Would you have rather seen Indiana hang on to it a little longer than take that three? Absolutely. They have gone away from what got them the lead earlier in the first quarter. They're taking quick shots, and the shocker in control of the flow of the game. The WNBA cares about the community. As part of the nationwide fast break to reading program, the league teamed up with Pitney Bowes to encourage youngsters to develop a lifelong love of reading. Teams and players hosted reading timeout events, held book distributions, created reading and learning centers at community-based organizations, all of which help students succeed the program's goal to collectively read a total of one million minutes. The WNBA leading, inspiring, and creating positive change. Take a look at our WNBA playoffs presented by Adidas. Game two will come from Indiana and Phoenix, respectively. Coming up next, the Western Conference Finals tip off. Tara Gannon and Carolyn Peck and Heather Cox will call that from Pauley Pavilion, where Phoenix general manager Ann Myers is a pretty good basketball player in the day. UCLA. They have a championship <laughs> banner from where she played in uh, 78 and she holds just about every record in that building for women's basketball. The GM as well. Boy, this has been brutal for this offense for Indiana. We've already told you they're the worst shooting team in the league, and this is really bad. Well, it's really bad because they're not getting any transition baskets, which are easy. No offensive rebounds or easy putbacks, and they're one of 11 in this quarter, as we talked about, with three turnovers. Zealous, who had 16 in the first half, missed that one. Braxton kept it alive and heads to the free throw line. Now Detroit out hustling the usually very high energy Indiana Fever, and now Hoffman has four fouls. And that's a problem because she changes it from the perimeters. You see, look at all the shot jerseys. The white jerseys swarm the boards, even when they don't get the initial rebound, they're keeping it alive. Braxton's first points of the night. Tammy hasn't got a shot this quarter. She's huh? Tammy, you're right. We've got to get her off. Well, that's what I'm saying. When we don't, when we don't execute the two-man game, then, then she doesn't get a shot. Jim Lewis, the assistant, talking to Lynn Dunn, former head coach of the Washington Mystics. But what Lynn Dunn is saying, Pam, is absolutely right. Ebony Hoffman gives them a different look because you can pick and pop with her because of her range. Braxton missed it. There's Hoffman sitting on the bench with four personal fouls. One of the goals was to get the bigs in foul trouble. She has four. Jessica Moore has three. Detroit's run has now reached 22 to six. This is a team that at one point was down 11 in this game. Twice. Nice kick and roll. Douglas finishes. That's just a beautiful read right there by Katie Douglas. She wanted the handoff, but it was taken away, so she slipped the pit. Catchings tried to get the charge, and she did. Cheryl Ford disagrees. She's got four persons. That's a jump stop where she's got to play with her knees bent a little bit more. She's too upright, and Catchings on that rotation is right there. Good call. Catching such a smart player. Drew it, so with four personal fouls, Ford goes out, Taj McWilliams comes back in. It's not too bad when you can take Cheryl Ford out and then bring Taj McWilliams in. That's the depth of the post for the shot. Indiana, which has hit one of its patented offensive droughts, still only down by three. Ovalakwa, guarded by Zealous, who has a decided height advantage, and Tully got a no-man's land. Catchings has to shoot. 
Meg Williams goes in to get the rebound. I know we haven't talked about this, but the defensive job that Nolan has done on Katie Douglas is leading to these up-tempo baskets by the shot. Braxton's first field goal puts the lead back up at five. Moore, who is not a highly skilled offensive player, lost it on the dribble. Braxton, to me, is the X factor in this series. If she comes close to what she did in the first round where she was lights out, she's big, she's strong, she's talented, and she is trying to play at a more consistent level night after night. Game one of their first round series against Atlanta, she was ter terrific. 16.7 rebounds, two steals, and a block. Very instrumental in that two-game sweep over Atlanta which came in as the second seed, Detroit the three seed in the East, Indiana number one. Boyzelis, great elevation on the jump shot. It's off of McWilliams. Another little detail as Christina Worth comes in the game for Indiana, the rookie from Vanderbilt, is that even if the shot cam are not getting the rebound, they're knocking it out of bounds so they cannot be attacked in transition. It's a possession for the Fever. Indiana has missed 11 of its 13 shots this quarter. The rookie comes in January and changes that. I bet you that Charlie Turner Thorne, the coach at ASU, just has a smile from side to side to see what her young lady has done as a professional. Eleven seconds left on the shot clock for Detroit. Now Christina Worth is allowed to enter the game. Jessica Moore takes a seat. Worth getting some more playing time in the latter stages of the WNBA season. Elevated her offensive numbers. Well, the first 18 games of the year, she had six points. The last four games, she's had 20. A lot of clutching and grabbing underneath. Results in a foul against Sutton Brown. Only Tammy's first. When you're clutching and grabbing, that means the player you're guarding is not standing. They're moving. They're so much more difficult to box out when they're on the move. Hornbuckle gets the switch and then left wide open for the shot, McWilliams. Detroit with a five-point lead over Indiana. The defending champion shot down by as many as 11 points in this game. Amping up their defense. Indiana's gone cold. And they have relinquished the big lead. Devontae Zealous with 16 points off the bench for Detroit has not scored here in the second half. But she gets a rebound. Three on one. Tweedy to Braxton made it look easy. The defense to the rebound, to the breakout, to the layup. This is shot basketball. And this is also Detroit's largest lead of the night. They are up by seven. The shot energy and defense is fueling their offense right now. The shot goes up. They have owned the glass. Zealous looks up. They are pushing. It's three on one. You draw the defender. If you're the opposite player, you go to the rim. Lynette Pearson out, had shoulder surgery. Got hurt five minutes into the first game. And I mean, how many other teams? You're missing Paulette Pearson, who in her career averages nine points a game. Katie Smith, 14 points a game this season and a lot of other intangibles. And it's like they don't even skip a beat. Well, they don't skip a beat because they have a championship mentality that Bill Lambeer instilled into this group. They understand how to play with adversity. They don't have to love each other all the time, but when they come to play, they come as a champion, and they understand what the next level is. Right. I asked Tweety Nolan how she explained it, and she said, heart. We have a lot of heart, and you do when you win three titles in six years. Bill Lambeer resigning three games in, then Rick Mahorn took over. It was a rocky road at first, 
But then 11 and 2 to close out the regular season. Now 13 and 2 over their last fi uh, 15. And nine of those games without Katie Smith. They come to they really come to play for championships. The regular season sometimes is a painful formality for the Detroit Shock because they know they have to get into the playoffs, but then they raise it to the next level when they get there. And almost nine minutes of play here in the third quarter, Indiana. Three of 15 field goals. So they have three field goals and four turnovers in about nine minutes of play, just six points. Steve LeBeau, our ace statistician all over Indiana's troubles. Well, he's been uh, giving us the card that tells us that Indiana has 13 turnovers in this game. And look at them, they cannot get a clean look. They are not proficient in the half court, and they're proving it time and time again in this game. They got out to that 11-point lead by running the ball, getting steals, forcing tempo, and they've been bottled up in the half court. They just don't have good enough movement for some reason in the half court, and it puts a lot of pressure on their defense to kind of save the day for them. Two starters, Bevilacqua and Catchings, on the bench for Indiana in the last minute of the quarter. Tweety Nolan does it all. Tightrope acts on the baseline for her 15th point of the evening. Largest lead again, now to uh, nine. Well, they got Dixon, and the veteran, for taking an extra step. When you're not scoring, you start rushing. You start trying to be a little bit quicker than you should be. Dixon in her 13th season. And with Tina Thompson, Lisa Leslie, and Vicki Johnson, the other regionals, two originals, two of those, Vicki and Lisa, retiring after this season. So they'll be down to only two. Tweedy with time running out. They're giving the ball to Indiana with 3.4 seconds left to go, and now another conference. Good hustle here by both Taj and Katie, who played many years together in Connecticut, and it's a tough call. If he has replay in football, that would be reversed. It went off of Douglas's leg. But defense by Zealous gets the ball right back with 1.2 seconds left. They knew they knew Zealous brought offense to the party when they drafted her. Her defense is a bonus, and her toughness. Zealous hit a three in the waning seconds of the second quarter. Let's see what they can draw up here with the 1.2 left. Braxton. Can't get it to go, but what a quarter it was for Detroit. They outscored Indiana 17 to six. Indiana scored six points in that quarter. Nolan had eight all by herself. The defending champions have picked themselves up again, and they take a big nine point lead into the fourth. ESPN's presentation of the WNBA playoffs is presented by Adidas. Impossible is nothing. And in part by IHOP. IHOP's gone NFL. Try the all pro lineup only at IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. Welcome back to Detroit. I'm joined now by Shaq head coach Rick Mahorn. Coach, Indiana in that quarter only made three field goals. Where have you tightened things up defensively? We just tightened them up defensively. We didn't have the effort that we, I wanted in the first half. We came back and we finally set the tone of how we wanted to be. But I tell you, on the other end, we're getting good stops and we're getting transition baskets. If you win this game, you put a lot of pressure on Indiana. What are the keys for victory in the last 10 minutes? Right, the last 10 minutes are going to be crucial because they're going to still come. They're a very good team. They know how to come back. They know how to fight. We just got to match their intensity. All right, Coach, go wipe that sweat from your brow. Thank you. Bam. The man's working hard, and so is Javante Zealous. Really, what she and Nolan have been able to do offensively has really been outstanding, but a lot of it has, be, has come because of the spacing and the transition. But since the first quarter, Indiana is shooting 29%. If you cannot score, you cannot win. They shot 43% in the first quarter. That was 
the halcyon days for them compared to what we have seen in the last quarter and a half. And Tammy Sutton Brown pulling her hands back because she knew <laughs> she grabbed Braxton going to the bucket. That's the second on the Canadian. And we're seeing the athleticism and the rebounding prowess of the perimeter players for the shock. And it's really become quite an advantage for them on the offensive end. Even though they might not get put back, they get additional possessions. No one rimmed out. Catchings gets the rebound. She's got 10 rebounds, but only seven points. She has not scored in this half and has scored only two points since the first quarter ended. Douglas couldn't get that one to go, and Detroit literally gives the rebound back by not controlling it. Sellis with a tremendous effort off the bench, but did not score in the third quarter. She had 16 in the first half, and they still extend their lead. But I really think the value is Shavante Zellis is the fact that she played great defense, so it doesn't always have to happen offensively for her. Indiana's missed its last seven threes. Catchings gives it up. Zealous takes it right to Tully. She put it in left-handed that time. In the open court, between Hornbuckle, Zealous, and Nolan, you are not going to stop them if they get ahead of steam. We have had a 22-point swing in this game. Indiana once led by 11. Now it's Detroit's turn to be up by 11. Indiana looks so uncomfortable in their half-court offense. They don't have good spacing. They're making poor passes. And their stars are not getting shots. Shot clock at one. Finally, they get a three. They had missed their last seven. And they got it with the shot clock expiring. Bevel was first points. Zealous over Tully. Hoffman gets the rebound. They look to run, but look, Detroit gets three guys back right away. Uh, you called it no numbers. You set it up. But look at the standing. There's 14 seconds to go, and the Fever have not made their initial pass inside. A little lobber to Hoffman who couldn't get it. Indiana gets it with six seconds left to go on the shot clock. Tamika Ketchings leading in the last huddle. Nice drive by Katie Douglas. Her fourth point of this half, but there's Ketchings telling, telling her teammates, get in there and shoot the basketball. When you're pleading with your teammates to up the ante and understand what's at stake, one, your coaches love that, but two, she is undressing them in the huddle, saying, well, I need your help. You will not find a player more intense than Ketchings. Sutton Brown couldn't get the rebound, so it stays with Detroit, Tamika Catchings has never even played in a WNBA final. The last three seasons, Detroit has ended their season in the playoffs. And a couple of years ago in the Eastern Conference Finals, Catchings tore her Achilles tendon in a series against Detroit. So she has nothing but bad memories against Detroit. And right now, the Pistons are uh, laying another one on Indiana. Inside the WNBA studios, I'm Cindy Brunson, and that's MVP candidate Diana Taurasi. She's also a WNBA first-teamer, and she's getting her mind right for game two of our playoff doubleheader tonight. Mercury and Sparks set the tip off at 10-10 Eastern time. Pam, Nancy, back to you. Thank you, Cindy. These two teams last played in the last game of the regular season. Diana Taurasi did not play in that game. That was L.A.'s only win. This season, two of the greats, not just in this league, but in the world, Tarasi and Parker. And Rick Mahorn, let's go back and hear what he said in his last huddle. Can't let them get any confidence. Defense, defense, defense. defense. All right, let's go. Huh? Still stay the same. Tweet, you, can you get through there or what? All right. Get a better head. Got to get a better heads up there on that. Rick Mahorn, who played for the Pistons, I called the shot the Pistons going to break, which was a slip of the tongue. But they're, you know, symbiotic. A absolutely. But shot. Sorry about that. Pam, the best thing a coach can ever do in a huddle is keep it simplistic. Defense, defense, defense is all they needed to know. One message. 
They've already done that. Indiana has five field goals in this half, seven turnovers, six field goals with catchings. Turnaround, and that is Tamika Catching's first basket of the second half. Well, it shows you the pressure that's on Katie Douglas and Tamika Catching to score for this team because they have seven points off their bench, and Detroit has 23 points off theirs. Even if you're having an off day as a starter, at least you know there's people coming with offense. 18 of those points off the bench coming from Zealous. Shot clock winding down. Indiana on a 7 0 run to get back into this game. Down by 11, now down by four. Detroit keeps the ball. And one of the ways that Indiana can try to get back into this, obviously, is playing better defense, but they average about 18, 19 points a game off the foul line. They only have five points off the foul line in this game. Nolan gets it and heads to the free throw line. Opportunity for a three-point play. Katie and Clement like it. I'd like to revisit the most important player in this series is Deanna Nolan because Indy has to stop her and they're not. And Detroit needs her and she's spot on. And that's a great matchup if you're a Detroit supporter to have Belvalacqua who's listed at 5'7", guard Nolan who's 5'11", and when she gets that jump shot off, she's about 6'9". Uh, probably 6'9". <laughs> yeah. And Tully's not 5'7". And Tully's playing great defense. She's done everything you can until the point of elevation, and that's where you throw everything out the window. Breaks that 7-0 Indiana run. Foul on Detroit, away from the ball. Cheryl Ford's fifth. He gets six in this lead, so Kara Braxton comes in right away to get Cheryl out of the game. She's got two points in this game. Kim, there's still plenty of time for the fever, but they've got to start running some plays Come on, now. Come on, Chief. That isolate either Douglas coming off of maybe some st stagger screens on the weak side or posting catchings up and giving them an opportunity to win this game for them. Boy, Hornbuck has done a great job defending catchings. Shot clock at five. I don't know if Douglas knows that. She's in a heap of trouble. Hit the rim, so they would have gotten a first 24, but Zealous got the rebound, and she's off to the races. Almost ran out of the sneakers, and now they settle into the half court. <laughs> Douglas guarding Nolan now. That's a better matchup for Indiana. Get rid of the ball if Tully is guarding you. Quick hands. Douglas got a hand on Braxton's shot. Zealous with the shot clock winding down. Detroit gets another opportunity. They just look so calm. It actually looks like all of them drank five-hour energy in the locker room at halftime because they came out with a renewed spirit. There's so much poise. No lead to them is insurmountable. And then you throw no one into the mix. The four-point lead is going back to six. Zealous takes it right to Sutton. Brown scores and has a chance for a three-point play. This is an amazing turnaround for the shot. Look at the poise. You find Nolan. First, that's a remarkable pass to get it over the defense out of a double team. Then she comes out. Look at that's the second or third time I've seen Catchings get her shot just blocked, which leads to a run out. And then Zealous with a fantastic finish. A 9 nothing run for Detroit. Balloons the lead to 13. They're largest of the game. Rick Mahorn said as they were going through the playoffs, we need force and we need focus. And I believe he's getting both. Inside of five minutes, another foul away from the ball, a hold on catchings. It's easily grabbed catchings for her second personal foul. Nolan, excuse me, Nancy, getting uh, looked at over on the sideline, her left leg. 
Well, hopefully it's not anything uh, too serious, but she's, she might have one of the MVPs in the league working on her and trainer Laura Ramos. The trainers in this league do not get enough credit for keeping these players on the court. Short roster, a lot of games in a short amount of time. I think it's just a cramp. He's being stretched out. Nolan logging a lot of minutes. 18 turnovers for Indiana. Very unusual. They only average 15 on the season. He's right on. But Pam, it's He's how holding. they're giving the ball to Detroit. Detroit Let's is go. Get it in. Braxton lost the handle, but McWilliams picked it up. Braxton had a block by Sutton Brown, had a second opportunity, and was fouled. By Ketchings, her third. Overall points leader Mark Martin races for a sixth victory of the season. Jimmy Johnson and Denny Hamlin hot on his heels. The chase with the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues. Sprint Cup continues at Dover. Coverage starts Sunday at 1 Eastern on ABC. The telecast presented by Burger King, a monster mile down there in beautiful Dover, Delaware. Pam, the people at Dover would be proud of the shock because it's like speed week here. It's absolutely unreal. Indiana needs a pit stop, and it's not coming. You are right, because this is a very big lineup right now. Big, athletic, tenacious lineup by the shot. Let's head over to Rebecca Lobo. Guys, the update on Tweety Nolan, it is a left Achilles strain. She's getting taped now by trainer Laura Ramos, and it looks like she will return. Thank you, Rebecca. She's, she had a concussion in game one against Atlanta. Comes back a couple of days later. And people said, is she going to play? Not only did she play, but she was terrific in that game at 22 points. Can't keep her off the floor. That's a good thing for Detroit because they don't have a lot of healthy bodies. Only nine players because of Pearson and Smith being unavailable. And really in the playoffs, your rotations are down to eight. You tighten up your rotations. You have somebody in the post, somebody on the perimeter, maybe a defensive specialist. Katie Smith, a wonderful player. He's represented us so, us, the United States so well in the Olympics. Winning, what, three gold medals? Three gold medals, but it's really nice to know you feel like an American. <laughs> well, it's not like I played on the team, but January gets a, gets a point on the free throw line. And, and right now, Indiana, you talk about backs up against the wall. they got to win not only twice, assuming they go on to lose this, but on back-to-back -back nights. Douglas for three. It's a tough series and a tough way to have to go back home to play, but Indiana has the wherewithal, especially if they can get Douglas and Ketchings involved in their offense. And again, the top seed in the East. They went 22 and 12 during the regular season. Did lose seven of their last 10 regular season games, but Lynn Dunn was giving a lot of her bench players time to play. Let's go into the Indiana huddle. Okay, guys, Break. Unless, we're, unless we're in transition, you know what I'm saying, for an early on ball, make sure give your give your people time to get set, okay? We're going to run fifth down, make them stop it, all right? Come on, guys, hey, hey, we're still giving up too many O-boards. Let's get a few more O-boards, run in transition. We don't have it, we're going to fifth down. All right, let's go. Katie, if you've got it, you're in fifth down. Catch, if you've got it, you're in fifth down. Come on. I always like when coaches give the responsibility to the players. This is what we have to do. It's you have to be able to execute this. This reminds me of game one when Detroit played Atlanta here. And Atlanta was on fire and just annihilated the shock in the first quarter. Mahorn sure we made the adjustment at halftime and they never looked back. Same thing in this game. They were down by as many as 18 points to Atlanta in game one of their first round series. Tweety Nolan's back in. Came back to win that. They were down in this game twice by 11 points. Led by as many as 13, and now it's a 10-point advantage. Now that was this, the, really the uh, breakout series for Deanna Nolan. She averaged over 25 points a game. And 
they're doing this without Katie Smith, who's really the heart and soul of their defense and their mind. Zealous aggressively to the basket, got hit by Sutton Brown, her fourth. Confidence and trust for an athlete is one of the, in, the greatest ingredients you could give them as a coach. And right now, the shock are feeling the trust, and that gives them the confidence. Now, what does this do to you on the other side of the ball? Here's an Indiana team that's lost three straight playoff series to Detroit. They were feeling good coming in. They thought they had their number, winning three out of four during the regular year. The only one they lost... Katie Douglas didn't play in that game because of the bad ankle. What does this do to Indiana? Now? It makes them go back. They're going to watch film. They're going to see where they got hurt. And this is a team that has to be able to say to themselves, we're going home. We play better at home. We're one of the best teams that play at home, and we have the best record in the East. They probably knew coming in here, Pam, that there was a chance they would not, would not win in Detroit. Zealous with the career playoff high, 23 points. She's only two off her career high period. She had 25 in a regular season game against Atlanta. Braxton had a block by catching. Does Indiana have one run left in them? Well, they need the run, but they need to make sure they're getting into their offense quicker now. Tully left alone for three. Had it cup out. Braxton gives it up to Zealous. Does not have numbers, and the rookie wisely holds up. Really, the, the, the whole change in this game is the fact that they have allowed Tully Bibalacqua to shoot that shot. Whoever is guarding Tully is totally off of her, sitting in the lane, waiting for Douglas and catches. She's only one of six from the floor. Braxton scores, gives Ellis a nice assist. Timeout taken by Indiana. 2.35 left to go, and they're down by 14. Detroit, an emotional team. They thrive off the moment. They have put it out there on offense, defense. They've been led by Mahorn. They had to have game one here in Detroit. A reminder, after the shock and fever are done, Lisa Leslie, two-time WNBA champ with a spark, set to tip off what might be her last playoff series if the Mercury get their way. That's next. Pam, Nancy, back to you. Thank you very much, Cindy. Here we have Detroit, which was down by three at the half. Look at that. They've given up 17 points in the second half. Indiana totally frustrated trying to get things done in their half-court offense. And Indiana totally frustrated whenever they play this team in the playoffs. Well, that is what happened the last three years. This is a new team that came in with the best record, second best record in the league, first in the East. So they thought they had the team and the chemistry to win. But they do it with their defense at Detroit by virtue of not turning the ball over has made Indiana actually have to score points on their own. And they're very deficient in the half court. McWilliams holding her hip, but she's the one called, for, called uh, for the foul. Let's go over to Rebecca. Pam, in that last settle, the Indiana team looked very defeated. Before they came back out on the floor, Katie Douglas gathered her team for some encouraging words. Whether or not they win this game, these last 222, very important for their mindset going into game two at their place on Saturday. Absolutely, Sutton Brown got a nice seal and her 14th point of the night. But they have been destroyed by the tandem of Zealous and Nolan. 45 of their 68 points scored by those two players. Now, I agree with what uh, Rebecca was saying. It is very imperative for Indiana that they finish this thing on some sort of a high note. Maybe it's about execution or getting a little bit of a run. They're going to need confidence. Zealous misses. Number 14 in blue. Shay Murphy checking in for the first time tonight. Boy, Douglas just got stuck by the veteran McWilliams. Jump ball. We said that the inside was going to have to help for Detroit. They've done more than help. Look at McWilliams just take the ball out of Douglas's hands and right behind her with Braxton. The former teammates at Connecticut jumped it up. And their hornbuckle was shoved out of the way by Murphy. And they got Murphy for the foul. 
Murphy in her third season out of USC, like Jessica Moore, joined Indiana in mid-June. And she has a ring. She was a part of this basketball team a year ago that won a championship, Shea Murphy. And there's Jessica Moore about to check back in. Hornbuckle hits the free throw line. She's not scored in the second half, but she has done a whole lot more important than that. Her thumbprint has been all over this game with her energy, her effort, helping lead her team, her defense. She was an unsung hero in Tennessee's championships. She is an unsung hero in what the Detroit Shock do. Helen Buckle also has six rebounds and four assists. Douglas goes out, and Jessica Davenport comes in for the first time. Both sides emptying their bench. Olyanka Sani in for the first time. Nolan gets a well-deserved standing ovation by many here. And Tamika Ketchings sees another frustrating evening against Detroit. Ketchings with 11 rebounds, 9 points, but only 4 of 11 from the floor. The defense on her in the second half, they rotated a lot of players to her Detroit. They never left their man-to-man -man principles. And Indiana and Tamika Catchings, with their backs against the wall, have to win Friday and Saturday to advance to the finals. And that's not going to be easy because they have to come with a renewed game plan of execution, especially in the half court. Mika Dixon back in. Here's Davenport. Good defense by Sonny. But then she... Nope, it is a three-second violation against Davenport. There's another turnover. And Ketchings, who was magnificent in that clinching game against Washington, and led, led every player in both scoring and rebounding during the playoffs coming in, struggling with nine points. He got 11 rebounds, but... Was just hounded all night. Well, she was hounded because all of her opportunities came in the half court where you can collapse on her and run people to her. And we mentioned that they took a player off of Kelly Babalakwa and they said, fine, Kelly, shoot it if you can. Kelly just one for six from the floor tonight. But it's three. Murphy runs right into Sonny. The collapsing defense, remember, help the helper. Don't forget those words because that puts you in the correct position on the weak side. Detroit about to take a one nothing lead in this best of three Eastern Conference Final. The winner of this series plays the winner of LA Phoenix and the fans in Auburn Hills get to their feet for another gritty effort by Ishaq. Down 11 twice, and they're going to win this thing. These fans are spoiled by the greatness of the shock, but they are tremendously loyal fans. Braxton left alone for her ninth point. Detroit in danger of not making the playoffs when they started out 9 and 14. They lose Katie Smith with seven games left in the regular season. And here they are, went away from another trip to the finals. And they've gone 12 and 2 to finish the season out. Javante Zealous, the offensive star with 23 points, along with Tweedy Nolan, who had 22. The Rick Mahorn's team playing its patented terrific defense when it's 72 56. Nancy Lieberman and Rebecca Lobo and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Pam Ward. We invite you to stay tuned on ESPN2 for game one in the West. Phoenix takes on LA at Pauley Pavilion. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Detroit wins game one in the East. Let's go to the West and Terry Gannon.